Coming up on today's Browns Report, we're going to talk about Jimmy Haslam's remarks as he spoke to the media in Phoenix during the NFL owners meeting about Andrew Barry and Kevin Stefanski and not putting him on the hot seat, but just a, a little bit of a warm seat. Also, we're going to start the show off by talking about a new potential stadium coming soon to a city near you in Northeast Ohio. So let's start with this. Are the Browns getting a new stadium soon? Well, Jimmy Haslam spoke to the media in Phoenix during the NFL owners meeting, like I said, and talked about Barry and Stefanski, and we'll spend the second half of the show on that subject. But he also chimed in about a potential new stadium. Now, to get some background information for you guys here, the current stadium opened up in 1999. The current lease runs through the end of the 2028 season. So more or less, the Browns are stuck there with the current situation in terms of if they wanted to build their own stadium and move, that really wouldn't happen until after 2028. But who knows? Contracts can always be ripped up. So I think the issue that teams or that people are running into is city officials, the mayor, and the rest of the Cleveland city officials and the Brown Stadium, the Browns um, front office are just not on the same page or really just not operating at the same speed. Here's what Jimmy Haslam said today about getting a new stadium. Cleveland would benefit tremendously from the development of, a, of the waterfront. Having the stadium down there seems to be in everybody's best interest. So we're committed to redoing the stadium. In all likelihood, it's not going to have a dome, but it'll be a substantial remodel of the existing facility, and we're probably three, four, five years away from that happening. So not a new stadium, right? A remodel of the current stadium without a dome. Here's really all I care about and what I want to see. Develop the area around it, put some bars, put some restaurants, make it a spot where fans can go to before and after the game, and, I don't know, keep skunks out of the stadium, right? I'm not asking for too much. Don't let people break in and rip up the field during the regular season. Keep skunks out of the stadium, and put some cool shit around the stadium. Like It's not a very long wish list here for me. Would a new stadium altogether be awesome? Yeah, who doesn't like new stadiums, right? Of course, that would be cool. I don't think it's not like First Energy Stadium is Lambeau Field or Soldier Field or something or Fenway where it's been there for almost 100 years. No, there's no real emotional tie to it. But financially, the Browns might not be interested in going through the works to build a brand new stadium. Now, when it comes to the dome element, right, which could be added on, although I'm not an engineer, I'm not an architect, that seems difficult to do, to add a dome without it already existing in the original blueprints. But if it were to be possible, do you want a new dome stadium, right? Give me a Y for yes or N for no. I'm going to give you my opinion in just a second. But while you're getting your votes in down below, I want to tell everyone watching about today's sponsor. So today's Cleveland Browns report is sponsored by Fume. We all have bad habits, and we certainly know how hard they can be to kick those bad habits. So our sponsor, Fume, is on a mission to accelerate humanity's breakup from the bad habits that consume far too many of us. Fume is a natural diffusive device that uses plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habit for a positive one. Now, I personally didn't expect a whole lot out of Fume when we got it here at Chat Sports, but people in the office rave about it, and they really like the powerful minty sensation. Now, Fume comes with the Journey Pack, which has three unique flavors— White cranberry, maple pepper, and crisp mint. Now, you can see the product in hand here is small, it's lightweight, it's mobile. But most importantly, Fume is not a vape. It's a non-electronic device to transform your negative habits. The easiest way to stop a bad habit is to switch to a positive one. And Fume is designed perfectly to do just that. Head to tryfume.com slash chat sports and use code chat sports to save 10% off when you get the journey pack today. That's tryfum.com slash chat sports and use code chat sports for an additional 10% off. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. Getting back to the whole dome conversation here. Jimmy Haslam was asked, hey, what if Mayor Bibb wants a dome, right? What would you do in that situation? He said, depends on how much he wants to fund. Listen, construction costs have gotten very highly lately. This is starting to become a classic 
team versus city battle where the team wants the city to chip in for a new stadium because of all the revenue it's going to bring, and they will loosely threaten the idea of moving. Now, it did happen in L.A., excuse me, with the Rams, although they weren't really ever looking for a new stadium. They just wanted out of St. Louis. But I remember when the Vikings were looking for a new stadium, there was some serious like threats being made of if the city or state does not chime in or chip in and help fund a portion of our new stadium, we will pack up and leave, which obviously didn't happen, but the city and state did chip in in Minnesota. So it looks like we're starting to get in the early stages of a bit of a billionaire versus city pissing war for who wants to help pay for a new or remodeled stadium. Now, what's interesting is go back about a month ago, okay? Ken Bre uh, Prendergast, Prendergast, excuse me, from NEO, NEO Trans Blog wrote this. According to several sources, the Cleveland Browns and its majority owner, the Haslam Sports Group, want to move faster than City Hall on what happens before the team's lease at First Energy Stadium expires at the end of 2028. That reportedly includes a new football slash multi-purpose stadium and supportive development in downtown Cleveland. So we've got sort of conflicting reports here, right? Ken is saying that he has sources who say the Browns want a new football multi-purpose stadium. Jimmy Haslam said today, it's probably not going to be new. It's probably not going to have a dome. We're looking to remodel and give some nice, tender, loving care to the current existing stadium. So, which one is it going to be? Now, personally, when it comes to the matter of whether or not, whether or not the Browns should get a dome stadium, I was team anti-dome for AFC North teams and really all cold-weather, hard-nosed teams as sort of a home field advantage and DNA of the city until the Saints game. But when the New Orleans Saints came to Cleveland and played in an icebox that was Cleveland, Ohio in December and beat the crap out of the Browns at their own game in the second half, I kind of thought to myself, if the Browns don't use cold weather to an advantage as their home field, what is the point of making everyone stand in the cold if they're not better in it than they against warm weather southern cities in December? So for that reason, I have switched to the other side of the aisle. I am now build a dome, get Final Fours, get concerts, use it year-round. And also, you're not a defensive team, right? The Browns' DNA, the Browns' success is going to ride in its offense. An offense that can't throw the ball at home in December very well might not be a very good recipe. Go talk to the Buffalo Bills about it. We've got more subjects to cover on today's show, but help us reach 19,000 subscribers. By the time the NFL draft rolls around, we just recently crossed 18,000, so a little under 1,000 to go. We've got 30 days to do it. Let's knock it out. Hit that sub button if you have not already to get the best Browns coverage. Now, when it comes to a new stadium, we just recently got some drawings and some illustrations about what the Buffalo Bills new stadium is going to look like. Looks pretty cool. Now, they're not, they don't have a dome, right? As you can see, there is no dome on top of it, which is a choice because Josh Allen, that arm, that offense, does not do very well late in the season, outdoors, in the cold, in the wind, in the snow. So we'll see how well that works for Buffalo, but maybe the Browns will try and go a better course for Deshaun Watson to be successful. Now, next up on the show, I want to spend the rest of it talking about Jimmy Haslam's comments on Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Barry and where he sort of views them going into 2023. Are they on the hot seat? Yes, but no at the same time. Here's what Jimmy said today on expectations this year. I don't want to say that, but I think I've I think that we have expectations to go to the playoffs. But I'm not going to say if we don't make the playoffs, X, Y, and Z happens because that'll be the headline tomorrow. This is true. Listen, the AFC is tough. You've all been around. Our division is tough. I basically am going to say what Jimmy Haslam wants to say. It's playoffs or bust in 2023. If the Browns don't make the playoffs this year, there will be changes made to this coaching staff and front office. Now, what I don't know for sure, is it playoffs or bust or playoff win and bust? Because those are two very different things. And like Jimmy said, if you get a tough matchup and you play either the Bills Bengals or Chiefs in the first round, 
that could be a bit of a tough matchup, and that could not be that. That could be where you, that could result in an early exit. That's not like okay, fold it up and let's get on out of here. Haslam also said this on Stefanski. You have to realize this. Kevin just turned forty. Andrew is thirty-five. Okay, they're now entering into fourth into their fourth year into the job, and we spend a lot of time with these guys. We've seen them grow. Kevin had never ever been a coordinator for one year when we hired him. I think he's learned and grown tremendously over the last two or three years. He did a really nice job of upgrading his staff, both defensive coordinator and the special teams coordinator. I just think we put ourselves in a much better position. I think Haslam just doesn't want to go back to the head coach carousel. And that's fine with me, right? I I mean, I know that the city is somewhat split on where people stand on Kevin Stefanski, but for Haslam to not just want to do what he's done previously, which is panic after one season – fire the coach and restart all, all all over again year after year after year. I don't really hate him saying these coaches and the staff are young. We want to see how this works out long term and not just give up two, three, four, four years into the job. So let me know, though. Is it playoffs or bust for Stefanski and Andrew Barry? Give me a one for yes or a two for no. I think so. Someone's getting fired if this team does not make the playoffs. Having said that, I am a full believer in this roster and coaching staff to turn out 10 plus wins in 2023. Anything less, assuming everyone is remote is, is relatively healthy, is objectively a failure. It's 10 wins minimum or 9 wins and we riot. All right, before we get on out of here, I know I've taken up a lot of your time today. I do want to give a shout out to Chef Ruben for the super thanks. Thank you so much Chef Ruben. Thanks, OBJ, back to the land. Not quite sure on that one, but I do appreciate your support here at the channel. And hey, support me off of YouTube as well. Hit me up on Twitter, at Matthew Petey. I'm always talking brownies over there. I'll see you guys later with more Browns coverage.